and the model that comes out. Um, so the topic will be about why trustlessness is important and how is that important for him to ask about it. So a bit of introduction. So, uh, can you proceed on this Okay. Um, so a little, a little bit of introduction. I've been in financial industry for the past um, eight years or so, doing some consulting as well as uh, coding. And currently I'm working at Mexico as a software engineer. Uh, my, pro, pri my primary focus is on you know, building the enterprise you want to see, and as well as developing our plasma or our, our sub network underlying uh, Ethereum. Um, so, the first thing so, Omiseiko, uh, how many of you have heard of Omiseiko? Okay, okay, yeah, so we are, we are uh, a blockchain company that focuses on layer 2 scaling solution. Um, it is based on plasma design. Uh, and specifically a version of Plasma called Plasma More VP. Uh, the first version of the network that we'll be launching is will be, uh, will be based on proof of authority and the primary use case for it will be payments. Um, so when I say layer two, what does it mean? So layer two is something that that's focused on primarily on scalability. Right? And when you think about it, layer one is Ethereum or Bitcoin. And as we all know, the Ethereum and Bitcoin are, we, we are pretty you know, trustless about it, but in terms of scalability, it's still hard to scale. So layer two is all about how we're going to move all the resource intensive work off the chain so that we don't have to rely on the, the, the speed of the, the layer one like Ethereum network. But also, since we are moving off the chain, we also want to uh, rely on the layer one security properties so that we are sure that all the assets that we have on the layer 2 solution is still protected by our main more secure network. Right. So before we go into further details, I want to talk a little bit about banking and trust. And for me, trusting in the banking system comes down to three things. For instance, I want my ability to uh, verify that the banks are doing my transactions correctly and my balance is correct. The second thing is I want to be sure that I am able to withdraw my funds whenever, whenever I need it to. And lastly, if those two things fail, if, I, uh, if I'm unable to verify my, my funds or my transactions, and I'm unable to withdraw my funds from the bank, I want my ability to be able to appeal to some sort of authorities that could help me recover my funds. And so in terms of banking and, 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 and trust, I think it comes down to uh, primarily three things that I'm able to reconcile uh, all the transactions that happen. Um, there are legal obligations that I could uh, use so that the banks would uh, give me my funds whenever I need to. And there are courts that I can go to to appeal for, for a request. So what does that mean to blockchain and, and blockchain and trust? Right? Um, I think it's pretty similar. Uh, so, in terms of being able to verify, we could verify all the transactions through the ledger, which is transparent, it's public, you can see it on, on, online. And in terms of withdrawing, I always have my private key. So, whenever I want to withdraw my funds, I am pretty sure that if I use my private key to do this transfer, it will transfer for me. And last thing is the ability to appeal. It's a little bit different from banking system right now because in terms of blockchain and permissionless blockchain, we consider it as code dissolved. So we don't really need a ability to appeal there. So blockchains are trustless, right? And I don't uh, I don't dispute that. But my, my main argument here is that even though when the blockchain network is, is trustless, for example, if you have a Bitcoin, it is the ecosystem surrounding this blockchain process as well. So here comes to my point about trust in layer two. So consider this case. We have Alice. Alice is running a, a you know, medium enterprise, uh, say running around 10 million USD uh, net wealth for her, for her company. And she wants to do like a million transactions per day. And currently with the systems, uh, for example, uh, Ethereum, Rough calculation that would mean like it's going, it's going to cost her about 100,000 USD uh, per day. And it's going to take 40 hours a day to, to make all the transactions, 
which is not possible, right? Because we don't have 30 hours a day. So here comes uh, a solution here where Box comes in and says, hey, we have this layer two solution. Why not move the funds to us and we will run this network uh, behind, behind Ethereum? And we are able to do it much cheaper and a lot more frequently. So here, with basic calculations, Bob is saying that um, I'm able to you know, reduce your, your cost down to about a thousand years a day. And I could you know, spend maybe, in summary, three hours a day on these passages. So there's a lot of capacity left that I could be using, the, the level could be using for other companies as well. So that's how it happens, right? In, in this case, let's say imaginary, you know, there's a network called We Say Go, and we claim that, oh, we have high throughput, it's cheap and secure. So Alice, what Alice said is, there, oh, well, this is great, right? So Alice deposits uh, the whole entire worth of, of her company into this second layer network. And so from, from that time on, now Alice conducts all her transactions, not through Ethereum, but through this network that's connected to Ethereum. Now, the issue is that if you consider it in real life, this Murphy loss is very, very, very true. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And this is not just a theory because it has happened before, right? Uh, things get hacked. And if you look past in the past, say, two years, and I did this compilation quickly, three out of four attacks actually don't happen on the layer one solution, right? It happens on somewhere else surrounding the blockchain, whether it's the service provider, whether it's the private key that got lost. It happens somewhere outside. So the, e the ecosystem around the secure layer one is very important. So this is going against all the PR textbook uh, that you probably have seen, uh, putting your own company's logo on fire uh, in front of the public. But this is possible, right? And as me as an engineer, I have to take this into account that if something happens, if the software bug occurs, if operation occurs somewhere in the system, or if you know, the private key is compromised, what happens then? What happens to Alice's business? Her entire business runs on this network and somehow one day something goes wrong. Is she going to lose that 10 million USD that she has in the network? And unless you can answer this question confidently, it would be very hard for enterprise to adopt blockchain. So what are our solutions to, to this problem right now that, that has happened so far? So we have a few options. We have not, we have issued uh, court orders. Uh, we have external regulations to help uh, fix the problem. Uh, in some cases, the spirit of the operator is, is really, really good. So the operator used their own funds to compensate for their users. And there are also uh, insurance solutions where you can insure uh, for those funds that you are transacting. But the problem is these solutions are not scalable. If you want blockchain to take over the world, to have the entire economy into the blockchain, you are, aren't able to you know, have your own funds compensating all the effort for covering the entire economy. And you can't insure against the entire economy. So what do you do? So blockchain has a scalability issue. But I would argue that the more important issue is that blockchain ecosystem itself surrounding the, the, the layer one solution has a cost scalability issue. And the question is not just about cost access, but the question is if I get into some kind of services or network, am I able to discuss it when time comes when I can't uh, no longer rely on that network? So what I mean by the ability to eventually distrust the system, I think of uh, my ability to monitor what's going on within that service. Uh, I think of uh, how am I supposed to you know, appeal if something goes wrong. Uh, I want to make sure that I am able to recover my funds if things go wrong. And this is not really related to, to malicious activity, but let's say you know I'm already in this service, but then there's a new Chinese service comes up. That you know, has a better value proposition that I want to move to that one. Is it possible for me to move it to a better alternative as a business? And these questions are important. So what does that mean for, for us at the Mesa the solution that we are, we are developing? Um, 
there are three concepts within this class of design where we uh, we use. So first thing is the watcher, second is uh, exit mechanism, and third is the chance mechanism. Um, let's go through some use cases. So in case one, if something goes wrong, let's say if the operator or organization will disappear, what happens to your phone? So we come back to Alice. Alice starts to panic because, you know, obviously going so far for whatever reason. What Alice uh, wants to do is, Alice wants to claim her funds back. Now please, let me move my funds back to the bank, so you very safe. Okay. So how does, how does Pasma enable this? Alice, because we are running on a smart contract, that's based on the year one solution. Uh, what Alice can do is that Alice can bypass the OmniSQL network completely talking to the layer one and say that, hey, something is going on. I can't talk to my operator network. Could you help me exit my funds? And Alice proves that she owns the fund by showing the receipt that she has put this amount of funds into the second layer solution. Now, when we say no smart contract, since it doesn't know anything about uh, the network behind it, it asks everyone to say, hey, does anyone want to, to uh, contract this proof? Wait for a while if no one you know, objects this uh, request to exit by Alice. The smart contract says, okay, hey, this is probably a legend. So the smart contract transfers the funds back to Alice. So now Alice is uh, back to the more secure layer of solution. And so let's twist this case a little bit and say that the operator or we say will actually become malicious. Malicious in this case doesn't mean that you know, I, I intentionally do something bad. But something somehow happens and then things go wrong. So in this case, you know, someone let's say let's say okay, and someone lost the problem. And you know, again, I'll go back to my company and probably get complained by the PR team for, for saying something like this, but this could happen, right? Um, so what Alice could do in this case, say you know, someone goes in by the private key and send a request to Ethereum or the area one solution and say that hey, can you transfer this and then USD from Alice account to my account. Of course, Alice will stream out because Alice has uh, been watching the, the network. So Alice submit a challenge request to the main layer one solution and say that, hey, this is not right. This transaction is not for me, but I own this fund. Can you please reject this request? So what Alice does is Alice gives the receipt saying that, hey, this is the old, uh, this is the latest receipt that I have that proof that I hold the fund. Please cancel this request. And smart contract does the same validation, waits until it's a much challenge. And if no one challenges that, Alice is able to submit another request saying that, hey, I want to exit this fund. And the funds get recovered back into the later one solution. So coming back a bit to banking and trust. I want to be able to, even on um, whatever service we use the solution, I want to be able to verify my transactions. I still want to be able to get job on a transaction where I need it. And I want my ability to appeal when something goes wrong. How does Plasma do that overall? So it has this uh, watcher system where you are able to observe whatever is going on in the, in the layer two solution. Um, there's ability where you could ask to exit by bypassing the, the second layer and talk to the more secure layer one solution directly. And I also have the challenge mechanism where I could go in the dispute that something is going on as well in the system. So what does all this mean to enterprise adoption and all the users who are not developing the, the actual network? Um, the thing is, this trust issue is not uh, limited to just layer two solution. It applies to all of the applications that have to talk to the, the blockchain network. It also applies to all the applications that are holding customer response. And as long as we can answer this question confidently that if something goes wrong in our services, what happens to my funds, it will be very, very hard to get into price production. So some a few of the questions that we could start asking is. How can I audit my funds? If I go into, if I put my money into your, your system, how am I supposed to know or figure out that my funds are still there, all the transactions are valid? How am I supposed to challenge if something goes wrong? 
some, someone misbehaved this system. Right? And lastly, how am I supposed to claim my funds back when I really need it? So, all in all, for enterprise adoption, I think one of the, the least talked about but a very important thing is that the service, whatever, uh, whether you're building a service or whether you're using the service, the safeness depends on your ability to recover the funds. And more importantly, it's the ability to recover your funds when even in the most fantastic event possible, you can still do it. So, um, as a last message for you, when, whether you're evaluating or wanting to adopt a blockchain solution or you're building one, I think it's important to, to ask whether I can trust my service to be running. And even more important is that, am I able to discuss it when things go wrong? And if you want to, so this comes to my final slide. Um, if you want to know more about the project and what we're working on, feel free to visit our website. All the code for the mechanics underlying plasma and the exit mechanics and the science mechanics is also online. You can see it on the up to later on the But if you want to see the smart contracts of how all this works, you can also visit us uh, at the uh, plasma contracts. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I will leave us this down. Joanna, thank you so much. Okay. There will be a token for you. Please remember to stay on stage. Mr. Khan, please help me to. Present the token our procedure from Endblocks 2019. They just discuss about trustlessness, yeah, and blockchain with distrust. Why trustlessness is the key to enterprise adoption?